this is Reverend JJ, and I'd like to welcome you to the Lotus Lounge. So the significance of the Lotus Flower, I think is something that needs to be touched on. I have the Lotus tattooed on my back. It's pink. It signifies a spiritual awakening. Uh, I'm also a yoga instructor, uh, so the lotus is significant in regards to that. And then just some of me in my background, I'm affiliated with the Church of Spiritual Humanism as a title for my reverend affiliation and being an ordained minister. I received my affiliation with that particular church after I started on my journey of being a Reiki practitioner. Uh, I am also a level two Reiki practitioner, uh, which Reiki is, for those that are not aware, uh, the healing touch. Uh, It's an ancient uh, form of healing. Uh, And I have a training in that also as well. But in the state that I'm in, you're required to have the ordained ministry as part of being a Reiki practitioner. So that was required. So that was why I sought that out. But in regards to the lotus, the lotus is also a symbol that can be used in the Buddhist philosophy or Buddhist religion. I don't affiliate with any particular religions. I'm going to touch on some controversial things and you take it or leave it. Uh, But I felt this way and for most of my life, I have had a connection to God or a connection to spirit, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I align with any organized religion. Again, some of my background, getting to know me, some of where I come from, and what's brought me to where I am right now today, uh, and my transformation from darkness to light, I guess you could say, the significance of the lotus flower to me is that spiritual awakening that occurred. So as a young girl... I was raised as a born-again Christian. That was the religion that we connected with and affiliated with while I was growing up. My dad and my grandma were Catholic. Uh, My father also went to a Catholic school. Um, I had attended some Catholic ceremonies and had gone to church uh, on occasions with my grandmother while I was growing up. But we as kids would go to Sunday school and we were considered born-again Christians. So later on in life, when I went to college, I took a philosophy course And the philosophy course was specific to Platonism, Christianity, and existentialism. And I found myself aligning more towards existential way of thinking. And this is the time where I started meditating. And I was in college already. I was taking a yoga class for my PE credit. And at that point is when I realized that yoga and meditation were key and important things in my life. And I, at that time, wanted to explore some trainings and learning a little bit more. My life segued and some things changed Uh, after graduation with my bachelor's degree uh, and we'll touch on that as we hit each chapter throughout the storylines of Reverend JJ and what she's gone through and 
what's brought her to this point. But a lot has happened. And I use yoga and meditation, mantras, chants, uh, mala beads, different things to help stay grounded and centered and working towards continuing to not allow the outside stressors of this matrix created simulated worlds that we're living in not really get to me so the lotus flower is significant growing from the mud blossoming in the morning sunlight it has a variety of significance but for me specifically regarding the lotus is my spiritual awakening I am connected to spirit I have an ongoing communication and dialogue with the creator and I don't feel that it's necessary to align specifically with any organized religion there are some other things that we'll touch on when it comes to the beliefs of organized religion but I do find that it can be quite hypocritical and I don't feel that it aligns with my true self and my authenticity as an individual, as a healer. So we'll keep this dialogue going. There'll be much more that I'll share throughout this time as you'll get to know more about my background, my history, my experiences, and how I came to this place that I am currently at right now where I feel at peace even though there's chaos happening around us so I implore you to maintain your own spiritual connection to find your spiritual belief feed your soul and your spirit with love and peace and do your very best to not allow the fear or the stress of what's going on right now to succumb and overcome, encompass all that you have going on right now. Stay grounded, stay in peace, and give it to God. Surrendering and allowing things to unfold naturally and allowing things to just be. Thank you.